The Mets just made two bullpen signings. Who are these pitchers, and what does it say about the Mets' bullpen for this season? Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watch2K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. And we are not coming to you, as usual, from the studio apartment. No, I'm in a hotel room uh, near Dulles Airport outside Washington, D.C. But I had to come on here and talk about these two latest Mets bullpen signings, Shintaro Fujinami and Jake Diekman. So Mets fans have been just begging for bullpen signings, begging for bats, for bats, you know, feeling like this lineup is at least one bat short. Well, the lineup may not have been addressed from the outside yet. At this point, I really don't know if it's going to be. I think that the kids are going to get an opportunity to play. But the bullpen definitely needed an upgrade, a couple of upgrades. <laughs> And with these two pitchers, maybe that's what we're going to see. So let's talk about who these pitchers are. Now, first of all, Shintaro Fujinami. He is 29 years old. Mets signed him to a one-year, $3.5 million contract. He is six foot six, big, big guy. Now, he really has five pitches in his arsenal. He's got a four-seam fastball, a split-fingered fastball, a cutter, a sweeper, and a slider. Still hard to know sometimes the difference between a sweeper and a slider, but apparently he throws both. Now, he has amazing velocity on the four-seam fastball. It averages a little over 98 miles per hour. It's even hit 103 at some points. And I think with the Mets bullpen, one of the biggest issues has been, outside of Edwin Diaz, they don't really have a pitcher who really brings the gas. Well, Fujinami can definitely do that. Uh, his splitter is graded pretty well. Uh, it, it's one of those pitches that got a little bit better over last season. Uh, the cutter is quite good. It's got a 38% swing and miss rate, and I think the fastball, the swing and miss rate on that's about 25-26%. That's pretty good for a four-seam fastball. All right. Now, in his first year in Major League Baseball, uh, did not go so well. He had a 7.18 ERA overall. All right. Now he started as a as a starting pitcher with the Oakland Athletics. Uh, you know, a place where careers basically go to die it feels like and, but then as a reliever he moved over to the Baltimore Orioles he got put in the bullpen and he had a 5.14 ERA in 57 appearances okay so that's not exactly great you know uh, but he did have one stretch 2.92 ERA 29 strikeouts and nine walks in 25 innings at the end of the day though he did not make the postseason roster for the Orioles so uh, this is not Yamamoto this is not even Koji Uehara you know who was a very good relief pitcher that came from Japan years ago was very good with the Red Sox and other teams this is really a gamble you know, it's a low-risk, very high-reward gamble. So if this works, it's going to be awesome. If it fails, hey, you know what? It, it costs $3.5 million. You move on after this season. But I have felt very strongly the Mets needed a reliable eighth-inning arm to help get them to Edwin Diaz, especially when your starting rotation is probably not exactly going to be dominant. It's a bunch of workmen-like, for the most part, starting pitchers. So if your starting rotation isn't going to look especially dominant, then you need a pretty reliable bullpen. And I felt the Mets needed that reliable eighth inning pitcher. You know, Adam Ottavino hopefully can help be that. I guess it's really going to be eighth inning by committee. Depending on the situation, let's see who emerges. It might be Brooks Riley one day. It might be Fujinami. It might be Ottavino. It might be somebody else. But this other signing that they made, Jake Diekman, uh, this one's pretty interesting as well. 36 years old. I don't know. It doesn't quite have the upside of Fujinami. But one year, $4 million, plus a vesting option for 2025. That option goes into effect if he pitches 58 innings this year. All right, so if he pitches 58 innings, he will also be under contract for 2025. Now, Diekman, uh, he can throw pretty hard. He can hit the mid-90s on the gun. Uh, has a sweeping slider. Uh, he can have a lack of command at times, but he's also usually pr pretty good at escaping jams as well. Has a lifetime ERA of 3.82. Last season, he joined the Tampa Bay Rays uh, in May, and we've seen many 
times, pitchers, even the position players, go to Tampa Bay, and it's like they've been dipped in magic waters. And all of a sudden, they come out a very good baseball player. Diekman's sort of another example. So in 43 innings with Tampa Bay, he had a 2.18 ERA, a 1.12 whip, with 53 strikeouts in 43 innings. Pretty dang good. You know, so he doesn't allow a lot of hard contact, which is pretty good considering he doesn't have top velocity. Uh, one thing the Rays did, they kind of took away his uh, his sweeper pitch because that pitch was not working with him when he was with the White Sox. And they said, hey, throw your fastball more. And it really seemed to work out. And uh, now he's uh, coming over to the Mets and, hey, with the pitching lab that they, you know, the infamous pitching lab that we're all hearing about, you know, between uh, Fujinami and uh, Diekman. You know, maybe those two pieces can help this bullpen. But you look at where the pen is overall. All right, you have Edwin Diaz as your closer. Got to feel great about that. From the left left side, you have Brooks Raley and Jake Diekman. You know, having two lefties is a very good thing as well. And then you have, uh, to me, these pitch these pitchers are pretty much locked in. Diaz, Raley, Diekman. Then on uh, then you also have for right-handed setup men Adam Adovino, Jorge Lopez, Shintaro Fujinami. And I know Met fans get very queasy about Drew Smith. I get it. But he's probably going to be on this team, you know, unless he gets traded, unless he gets moved. That's seven pitchers right there. You know, I think nowadays with a 26-man roster, you pretty much want eight. So you can add one more. And, of course, you need to have some guys waiting in the wings for when somebody gets hurt or when their game goes to hell. So then you have some pitchers with no options. I'm just going to run through them real quick. Michael Tonkin, who the Mets signed over from Atlanta. Phil Bickford, who made some appearances. Looked pretty decent. Uh, Yoan Ramirez, who uh, is very, very good against righties. You have Max Kranich, who's back from Tommy John surgery. Uh, Had a very good season uh, in recent memory with Pittsburgh. You have a Sean Reed Foley as well. And then you have some guys who have options, like Austin Adams, most recently with Washington. Grant Hartwig, we saw saw of him last year. Year. Kyle Crick, Reed Garrett, there's some other guys as well. But the good thing is, you know, maybe one, two at the most of those guys will have to be on the team. And there'll be an opportunity when the team goes down to Port St. Lucie, you know, there will be a spot. They're going to say to these relievers, hey, they're going to dangle the carrot. If you want this, it's yours. Come and get it. All right, so while I don't think the Mets are going to have anywhere near the best bullpen in baseball, at least they have some more pieces that have some legitimate upside now. So let's see what winds up happening. Those are my thoughts on Diekman and Fujinami. Let me know your thoughts. Put them right down there in the comments. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you with more content. Well, eventually I'll see you with more content once I'm back in. The Wicker Chair. We'll see you later, everybody.